How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week nine in this final season with Coastal. We are on a bye week, which means we have some recruiting stuff to do. We don't really have points to uh, put in. Um, we are making a little bit of a play here, a very risky one for, I believe it is this defensive tackle, Zach Moore. No, it's the tackle David Day. That's who it is. Offensive side of the ball. Anyways, David Day, we're 4,000 points behind but he is stuck at that 73% locked, which means no teams have offered him a scholarship. So our plan is going to be give him as many points as possible. Uh, we'll even give him a scholarship this week and we'll see maybe if we can erase that deficit. Uh, a couple weeks, it could be almost gone if we get a little bit lucky. So as long as we don't get locked out, we will have a chance. And then the rest of our recruiting, we have two visits to schedule. And I'm not entirely certain what we were going to do. We were planning on sending everybody to Mizu because they were ranked. But now Mizu is unranked and South Carolina is ranked. They are next week's matchup. So uh, those extra bits of XP for sending your guys to a ranked opponent uh, is worth it to me. So we're going to send uh, the kicker and the defensive tackle and Zach Moore to that South Carolina game. We're still just sitting at second in the top 25. As I guess we'll go based off of the BCS from now on. Uh, any ranked opponents? Auburn will play that South Carolina team, so there's a chance that they aren't ranked when we play them. Uh, if the Tigers can win, that would kind of be a little bit of a shame. Uh, Tennessee just lost to South Carolina. Wisconsin plays our ranked Purdue. And Ohio State plays a ranked Rutgers. Anything else? Arkansas and Ole Miss will play. Uh, nothing too crazy, but, you know, always a chance to see some upsets. And when there's two ranked teams playing, we love that because that means at least one of them will take a loss. Our Heisman watch continues to be interesting as Marquise Jackson has moved into the top spot, bumping down Raid on two spots to number three. Uh, even though he had a very solid game, 20 of 24 for 337 yards and four touchdowns is pretty dang efficient. But Marquise also had four touchdowns and got pretty much the same amount of yards, uh, 40 less, but a little bit more impressive when he does it. Taking a quick look, Radon currently sitting as the third highest passing leader in the country. Uh, quite a ways off of R. Howard from Middle Tennessee. Uh, just 1,800 yards for him. I'm sure he drops down in this bye week, but pretty impressive, especially because we've never been a huge passing team. Uh, but we're just not running the ball much this year, and it shows. Radon is our leading rusher with only 404 yards on the season. Marquise, fourth leading receiver in the nation. Tackles, of course, don't really matter. Uh, Wilson, six sacks, puts him at number seven, so top 10 there. Interception-wise, Don Riley is at 27th with three. And kicking-wise, Marcus Frederick, uh, well, isn't on the board at all. I'm fairly certain we've kicked a field goal with him, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, let's just go ahead and sim towards next week where we will play South Carolina in week 10, and hopefully they're going to be ranked. No really crazy recruiting news. A couple more guys are ready to visit, uh, but nobody commits anywhere. Nobody locks us out so we're fine with that still ranked uh and we move up to number one south carolina has beaten auburn that seems like it was a great bye week for us because i imagine that the longhorns have taken a loss taking a look at our bcs we move up a lot of teams moved up that must have been a crazy crazy week texas loses to tcu by four on the road auburn loses to south carolina on the road Oklahoma at number four lost in overtime to Kansas State. We've got number seven, Michigan, losing to Minnesota. Anything else? This is crazy. The Ragin' Cajuns lose to Georgia Southern. Iowa lose to Northwestern. And if we look at the media, maybe we can see. Let's see, Ole Miss, Purdue, and Georgia Tech all dropping out. So I imagine they took some losses as well. So we see a large amount of teams falling last week one six four seven all dropping which is massive for us the bye week however pretty bad for us in terms of heisman watch 
Uh, Marquise drops down two spots, and Radon has dropped completely out of the top five. And Patrick Griffin, the running back for this South Carolina team that we're going to be playing, has dropped or has jumped up to the top spot after a bad game. 18 carries for 97 yards and two total touchdowns. That doesn't seem like anything spectacular. They did have a big upset against Auburn, uh, but I mean, he didn't necessarily have a great game. Well, we're going to be looking to beat them. Let's take a quick preview here. Expected to win. South Carolina is a B-plus, likely low 90 overall team. They have a solid running game. You know, they do have a 90 overall running back leading the Heisman. Uh, otherwise, they're not great. Good on pass defense for the most part, and they have one fewer turnover than us, but nothing incredible. 6-2 and two for the Gamecocks this year. They lost to Ole Miss in Week 1 and then lost to Kentucky in overtime. Uh, but they have some impressive wins, back-to-back -back big wins against a number five Tennessee and a number 11 Auburn. So they're coming in with a lot of momentum, trying to continue to get ranked victories, looking to beat us, and then maybe a ranked Florida afterwards. So we just have to hope to shut them down. Uh, I mean, our schedule, it's all W's right now. We're winning games very well. Uh, pretty easily so far so we're just hopefully gonna walk in here and just shut them out and you know tell them to drive back home uh this is a big in-state rivalry i'd say at this point both teams from south carolina both teams in the sec so we're gonna try to hope that get that done uh we do have a couple more guys that we can uh bring on visits so let's go ahead and try to stack that up if we can. Adam Smith, the wide receiver, isn't all that special, but we'll bring him for the XP. And Patrick Carroll, uh, we can get that complimentary visit with Zach Moore, the defensive tackle, and also get the XP. So four recruits will be in attendance for this game. Looking at David Day, we have jumped up 940 points in one week. And we are still the only team to offer him a scholarship. Uh, so there's a chance if we continue to pour these points in, we could be right up in the mix for the 78 overall tackle next week. Uh, with our 50 points, let's go ahead and offer somebody a scholarship this week out. Um, actually, we've offered scholarships to everybody that I care about. So instead, let's just find somebody and give them some points. We've got a big one here. A true test, they say. So let's get into it at home. Uh, let's put on the black uh, jersey this time around. South Carolina. Well, I'm not sure what we, we would go for. They've got the away preset. They've got the alternate two with the black pants. The black helmet on the alternate four. We could throw some Garnett in there. Uh, I honestly, I'm kind of liking alternate four. What if we give them the Garnett pants, though? Uh, yeah, that's a fun one. Let's let's mix it up a little bit. Uh, 90 overall for the Gamecocks with an 84 offense and a 93 defense. We outclass them in every aspect, but the question is, will we be able to actually perform on the field? This is a battle of the chickens in South Carolina today. Let's hope that we can come out as the top cock on this one. This is showing maybe my ignorance of the state, but... I had no idea that South Carolina was so big on chickens. Uh, <laughs> offensively, they rank pretty high up there in, in, among the country, uh, scoring a lot of points and getting a lot of yards, uh, running the ball very effectively. Their defense is very solid as well. Top 50 easily. They don't give up a whole lot of points, and they do not really allow a whole lot of yards. Uh, we look okay defensively compared to them and we definitely look better offensively we're scoring a ton of points this year if we have a decent game running the ball this should be an easy win for us i think again four guys visiting uh some some big guys zach moore adam smith would be massive pickups but we're not going to necessarily focus on the goals today we're just going to hope that we come out on top their top players are right end a corner and a left end in that 90 overall mark, but do they have any injuries? They've got an outside linebacker and a right tackle. One out for the season, one probable. Anything out will certainly help us in this game. It feels like it's been a while since we've had a home game, so I'm excited to see how the fans can help spur us on to victory today as, well, South Carolina loses the coin toss, so we're going to elect to kick this one off. 
I am hoping that the defense can get us off to a strong start here today as Frederick will put this one into the end zone for a touchback and South Carolina will take over at the 25 yard line. We will come out in the man to start this game, but we got to remember that Griffin is a great running back and he's got to be contained as the quarterback scrambles and Kale Mackey hits him behind the line for a loss of three. That did not look like my user. Something happened. If I can make an open field tackle, it's a miracle. They're looking. Quarterback scrambling again. Will Phillips needs to get there, and he forces the fumble. Nobody can get to it. Oh, my gosh. He was just sitting on his knees watching it. The lack of effort. That hurts. It seems almost like we're going to need a QB spy on this game, so we'll put Taylor into that role on this third and eight as we will expect them again to pass than they do. And it's... Oh. Almost intercepted by Sandcastle. He gets the deflection and he drops what would be a pick six. It's a three and out though for our defense as a, the start of this new rivalry is definitely going in our favor. Gamecocks having to punt this one away and Marquise trying to prove why he should be at the top of the Heisman watch list and not their running back and he gets a good return 25 yards across midfield. Well, I'd love to open up the running game to start this one out. So that's what we're going to do. Handing it off to Mike Fontaine, hoping that he holds onto the ball well today. That's a good six-yard pickup on our first play from scrimmage. They're playing the corner up on Marquise. So depending on what the safety does, he could be wide open or we could go over the middle of the field and find Williams. And Johnny's got it inside the red zone just like that. Throw it right over the head of the linebacker, and we get a massive pickup on the first uh, pass attempt. So from the 12-yard line, what can we do? We'll look at a jet sweep and giving it to Johnny again. Does he have the blocking? Not quite. He's still going to get a couple of yards there. Now on second and seven, we'll just hand this one off. Looking kind up the middle, seeing if Mike can get some blocks. And he does all right. Third and four. And uh, we're going to run this one. We're going to go with the counter on third down. I just don't feel like a pass here is going to work well. And Mike's got some blocks, and he's into the end zone. Six yards up the middle. The blocking was beautiful. And we're going to take a 7-0 lead pretty early in this first quarter. So Frederick once again can kick it away. And all the momentum has to be in our favor, especially since we're playing at home. They didn't run it all on the first drive. I'm going to expect that to change on this one. First down, they put a man in motion. And no, they're going to step back to pass, throwing it out towards the edge. There's a big tackle from Smith out on the edge there. Second and seven comes. Finally a handoff. No, they go play action. Quarterback outside the pocket. Will Phillips slows him down. Kale Mackey gets the hit, but we gave up four yards. This is some of the most confusing play calling I've seen in a while on third and three again stepping back looking to throw and Kale Mackey gets a hand in there to deflect the pass and cause another fourth down it's three and out once again for the Gamecocks and they have not utilized their Heisman caliber running back once in this game uh, and at a certain point it's going to get too far away from them. they're going to have to continue to pass Marquise Jackson on the return that was just bad user for me still gets 12 yards but we don't have the best field position. So we came into this game expecting them to run really well and us maybe to get lucky running, but it seems to be opposite of that so far as we have run the ball very efficiently so far. Curious to see what we can do here. Safety's not pressed up too deep. They're going to bring a little bit of pressure, not the most. And I'm just going to scramble and, oh, Radon makes a man miss. I should be sliding down and there we do. Ooh, if we took another hit, it's probably a fumble, so... Thankful just to get our yards and get down. Across midfield. We will look to hand this ball off once again. The blocking holding okay on the edge, but it breaks down right as we get there. So it's only a yard for Mike Fontaine. Yeah, we're going to try an interesting run here. The GT counter dummy. Blocking not the best. Mike finds a little bit of a gap, but then gets caught up on the line and only gets two. So that brings up a third and seven for us to contend with. And we will go to the air looking for it over the middle, maybe having to lob it up. And I'm lucky that that one doesn't get picked off. I thought that defender was going to go a little bit more to the right. Stick with uh, the first man crossing, but he didn't. And so we're going to have to punt it away and we'll look to cough and corner them. Uh, I feel like I'm struggling here. Four mile an hour wind kind of coming against us. As I shanked this one. <laughs> oh, no. 
Uh, we should have just gone for it. Just trying to do the defense a solid and give them great field position to work with, but instead I kind of screwed it up and South Carolina finally runs the ball and right up the middle, Griffin gets 12 yards. Exactly why I'm surprised that they haven't run that play yet this game. And they're going to go away from it. They go with the screen. Kale Mackey gets the tackle, and that one goes for a loss. Still just very confused as to the play calling right now. Second and 11, nearing the end of the first quarter. They're going to go with another play action. There's a man wide open. Kale Mackey gets the beautiful wide open tackle. And on this potentially final play of the quarter, they're going to go deep. Spencer Stanley got burned. And Paul Washington is inside the 25. Everything about that play just kind of felt broken to me. Uh, they capitalize off of it, and they go for the run here, and we're there in the backfield to drop them for a loss of two. That's going to be enough to end the first quarter. We're up 7-0. We had a chance to increase it maybe to 14-0. And now we're just going to try to hold on and keep our lead as they are definitely in scoring position. Pleased with the defense so far. It's just the offense that kind of needs to figure some stuff out. This one to start the second quarter. Another run and another loss. Three yards that time as Griffin continues to be hit in the backfield. So we can expect the pass on third and 14. The question is, what can we do to stop it? No, they're going to run the ball. And it's going to work. They got 15 yards. Oh, that's disappointing. We certainly can't have that happening. As on the new first down, they're going to go over the middle and we get the tackle, but they just continue to move and get seven yards. Bringing a big blitz on this one. Going to rush seven. Up the middle, they run, and again, we hit a running back in the backfield. So anytime we get them into these third downs, it's good. So on third and four, maybe expecting another run. I could see it being a counter. With a man in motion, maybe not. They look back to throw. Then the tight end is wide open. Lamb goes in at seven yards into the end zone, and it's a tie game. Well, South Carolina has fought back after a bad start to the game, and it's all tied up. So it's up to our offense now to find some more momentum as, oh my gosh, they have a long ways to go. Nowhere to go for Marquise there. Looking for the play action again on first down. They are bringing pressure this time. And again, over the middle, we're going to find Jonathan Williams. Uh, their coverage just a little bit too shallow. We're able to throw over the top of them. Radon gets his second completion. Only on three attempts, though, as we'll hand this one off. And Mike Fontaine, again, just not having the blocks hold up quite long enough for him to get positive yards. That gives us a second and nine, and we will look to the air. Easy throw to Bo Lamb. He's going to break a tackle and almost get us the first down. Well, the punt didn't work last time, so we're in four down territory now. And on third and inches, a dive up the middle should be enough, and Mike Fontaine easily gets it. Uh, I think even crossing that midfield mark. Well, let's throw in our first read option of the game. Right on. Keeping it has some space and will slide down to avoid the contact. That's an easy nine yards. Halfway through this second quarter, we'll look to throw once again. And again, Bo Lamb's open. They just don't want to cover him And that short little curl. I absolutely do not mind punishing them with those short throws if they're not going to cover it. And, uh, oh, I threw that to the wrong guy. Meant to throw that to Marquise over the middle, but uh, just screwed up. Well, how about uh, on this one? Second and 10. Look into the air. Marquis wide open, and he gets us the first down. Got to keep it balanced, so we will run up the middle on this one, trying to get inside the red zone. And Fontaine just uh, does just enough for that. We're going to look to him again. Just this time through the air. Second and seven. Coverage is all right. Fontaine drops the ball. Oh, the coverage didn't have anything to do with that. So now we have a third and seven. Two minutes left in the half. And we're going to have to go to the air, hoping for the best. They're bringing a little bit of pressure as over the middle we have JJ Barr. And the fullback breaks a tackle and gets into the end zone. He has been incredible in the receiving game this season. Much better than you would expect for a fullback. And just like that, we turn it from a third and eight to a touchdown. We increase the lead back up to seven. All right, Frederick 
Kicking another one away. We got the wind at our back, I think, now. And so these are uh, pretty much out of the back of the end zone. I might try to experiment with uh, putting them in a spot where they will be returnable, but not yet. And oh my gosh, my user on these runs has been good so far today, which is so surprising. As the clock gets to 2.01, South Carolina has taken their first timeout, and I'm going to expect them to go to the air now. Uh, we'll see, I'm assuming, some passing. And yeah, on second 11, they look to the air, and we kind of bait them into throwing it to the running back, and he only gets a yard. So it becomes third and 10 and a chance for the defense to get off the field with plenty of time to uh, score again before the end of the half. We also get the ball to start the third quarter. South Carolina here is burning the clock, which means they're worried they're not going to convert this first down. And on third and 10, they're going with the screen, and that's going to go nowhere. We'll take our first time out with a minute and 15 left. His quarterback is 8 of 10 so far on the day, but he's just not finding anybody downfield. And they're going to have to punt this one away once again. Definitely a returnable kick for Marquise. Can he get some blocks? He's got a couple. And he has the corner. So great field position as we will look to score one more time before we have to go into the locker rooms. We still have two timeouts to work with. So I'm not super worried about the clock. We'll go into the hurry up after this one, but we're going to go with the read option because Radon has... Uh, he had a decent amount of space. If we could have maybe bounced that to the edge, it could have been six. Second and five. Clock moving. We snap the ball. Waiting, waiting over the middle. Fontaine can't get there. Pass was maybe a little bit overthrown. It brings up a third and five. And again, we'll be kind of forced to pass here. And right over the middle is Chad Bradshaw. That's a good first down for us. It'll stop the clock. Still two timeouts to work with as we will look to the air once again. And I'm going to throw the timer out. No, no. We are lucky that that one wasn't picked off. The defender knew exactly what was coming. Looking to the air again. 34 seconds. Throwing it up towards the front corner of the end zone. Chad Bradshaw can't hold on to it. Good defense maybe to get a hand in there and break it up. Now we're going to have a pretty difficult third down to try to convert. They're not bringing pressure. Going for the timing. Williams can't hold on to it through the contact. We placed the ball in a good spot, but the pressure got there immediately. And I'm just going to resign myself to taking the field goal. We already have a lead. We get the ball to start the third quarter. So let's just take the points that we can. Uh, not risk losing anything there. And with 22 seconds and two timeouts, we'll give South Carolina an opportunity to return this kick. Uh, hopefully they get in a long field goal range and we can just get a kick six. Get some more points. Maybe a pick six too. I don't care. We'll be expecting the pass, but I would not be surprised if they run the ball up the middle here. Teams tend to do that. Now they're probably going to take a timeout and now they'll go for it. Very weird but oddly predictable situation that happens in a lot of my games as on this one they're looking to throw and over the middle I just barely can't recover in time and give up four yards. And that's going to be it for this half. There's no way they get this one off, right? Maybe they do? No. Clock expires. So we can take our 10-point lead into the half feeling pretty happy about it. Could have been more, uh, but we can't complain. We get the ball to start the third Defense has played phenomenal. We have, for the most part, shut down their running game. Uh, and we're holding them to short passes, although they're completing them a little bit more frequently than I would like. And I got to give myself credit because I've made some decent open field tackles that in a lot of games I completely miss on. So uh, I'm happy about that. Uh, if you have enjoyed this game so far, scroll on down real quick and hit the like button. Uh, helps out a ton. I appreciate it. Maybe we can open up this half with something beautiful. Marquise, definitely a returnable kick. We're going to bring it out of the end zone. Looking for some blocks. It doesn't seem like there's any there. I don't know what our return team is doing today. So once again, I think this might be the third time this game we're starting a drive from inside our own 20. As we're going to try to pass our way out of it. Over the middle, Marquise Jackson with an easy reception. And he gets 13 yards. They came into this game with a pretty solid record in defending the pass, but they are not doing a great job so far against us. Mike Fontaine up the middle, fighting his way forward. He finds six yards. And I want to see if we can burn him. We've got Sean Stewart and Marquise Jackson 
Going deep on the right side. One of them is going to pull the safety away. So we give it to Sean Stewart since the safety goes with Marquise, and that's an easy 32 yards. We've done a decent job of just moving the ball in general this game, so I'd like to hope that continues. And Mike Fontaine with a decent chance to get out towards the edge. He doesn't have the opportunity to run much, so we like to see that. I'm going to make a very risky decision. I never run these just normal options where we got to pitch the ball, but we're going for it on this one. And so I'm not going to pitch the ball, and it's going to work out well enough. We get the first down. There's a chance that that could have worked for more, but, oh, I get so scared when I pitch it. So instead, we hold on to it through the contact. We get the first down, and the drive can continue to stay alive as we find Marquise Jackson over the middle, just outrunning his man on the slant route for the first and goal. A very efficient uh, drive to start this half so far as we have just continued to move the ball forward. And on this first down, Mike Fontaine cuts it back inside and finds the end zone once again. The seven-yard touchdown, Russ, will increase the lead once again as we have hit 50 touchdowns this season. I'm curious to see as the defense comes out on the field if these guys made any adjustments at halftime. They're going to snap the ball, looking to throw, and again, another short pass completed. We don't give up a ton of yards. That is, however, much more than we would have hoped for. Second and one, trying to bring pressure on the safety blitz. They throw it out towards the edge, and it's Don Riley getting beat. And it just gets to this point now where every play I'm expecting the run. Here it is this time towards the edge. Will Phillips makes him stumble down, so he'll only get seven yards, but a little bit disappointing. And again, we're going to look to bring some pressure. Second and three, trying to do what we can. Quarterback scrambling. Will Phillips in the spy gets there for the sack. Brought, brought him down pretty much at the line. And that's going to bring up a third and four for the Gamecocks now. A crucial time for him. They hand it off up the middle, and we get there with Don Riley to force the fourth down. And for some reason, South Carolina is going to elect to punt this one away. I think that's a foolish mistake, but certainly happy with it. They tried maybe for the coffin corner, but this time they might have shanked it. We take over the ball here at the 28-yard line to start our drive as we will look to pass, and, well, that one was a little bit awkward, but eventually we find Sean Stewart and we get a quick first down. I think if we can score a touchdown on this drive, it's going to be all but over on the game as they're just going to be running out of time. Mike Fontaine up the middle gets an easy five. And once again, we're going to be going with this play action and seeing do they cover Marquise or Williams? No, they covered them both off, so I'm going to have to run. And Radon, with a lot of space to do so, slides down across the 40-yard line. The coverage was great from the Gamecocks that time, but just not enough to stop the scramble. So we stay alive a little bit longer. Mike Fontaine up the middle gets four more. In this fight we have going on, I, don't, I might have to bleep that out. I don't know if I can say that. We seem to be coming out on top. The superior rooster. As it stands, J.J. Barr getting two yards on his carry there. I wish that we were shutting these guys out, but I can't be upset the way it's going so far. Third and four, we'll look to the air for the conversion. And, oh no, I don't see it. I got to get rid of it. We barely throw it away in time before getting hit with a big sack. But unfortunately for South Carolina, we're going to go for this. We could hit the easy field goal, but I want to keep this drive alive and continue to burn some clock, and I'm also looking for the touchdown. So outside the pocket, a tough throw. Williams holds on to it. Oh, no fumble, no incompletion. We convert the fourth down. Anything we can do to keep moving the ball is fantastic. We are now at 30 seconds left in the third quarter, handing the ball off to Mike Fontaine, and once again, he has a solid carry up the middle. A little bit of extra effort for another yard there. So far, the team is perfect inside the red zone. We'll go triple option to end this quarter. And I... Uh, well, the, I made the correct read, but they brought extra pressure. And we're going to lose a bunch of yards there. Uh, good defensive play from the Gamecocks to end the third quarter. But we're going into the fourth with a big lead. Uh, it doesn't feel like they're going to have a chance to come back. Just not enough time. So uh, if we put up points here, it's all but over. Still going to say, though, that we are in four-down territory as this is third and eight from the 24-yard line. Looking to pass. Let's just go with the safe one out towards the edge. Mike Fontaine makes a man miss, and he breaks the tackle. An absolutely beautiful move, and he gets the first down. 
That man's ankles just shattered into a trillion pieces as Mike did some moves there. I didn't know he could move like that. Had to take a breather afterwards. JJ Barr's come in to take the carry for him. An absolutely beautiful carry as uh, he's come back in and on second and five, maybe looking to give him another one. Cutting it back inside. And there's nowhere for him to go. Just a couple of yards before he's brought down. Well, we're going to do some interesting moves here. The halfback pass. We'll see what he can do outside the pocket. Throwing it up. JJ Barr gets the catch. And he gets the first in goal. I thought Mike was about to get a touchdown pass there for a second. I'm not going to lie for uh, running back. I was expecting a worse pass than that. But it works out well. And on first and goal. With the read option, it's going to be J.J. Barr losing two yards. Unable to fight through the contact there. Well, I probably should have gone with the fullback dive on the first play there, but we'll do it on this one. Giving it to Spencer up the middle, second and goal. And he's not going to get into the end zone, but he's going to be right on the doorstep. And we're going to use this as an opportunity for Radon just maybe to pad his stats a little bit with what should be an easy QB sneak over the line, through the line, doesn't matter. He's in to the end zone and it's gonna be 31 to seven with just three minutes and 22 seconds left in this game. This is gonna be a returnable kick for sure. Booting it way up in the air. It's not even gonna get past the five, but we'll see, can the coverage team do anything? Yeah, that was worth it, that was worth it. We were able to burn a couple more seconds off the clock and Get them only to the 24-yard uh, line as they've started to go five wide and they're looking to pass a ton here. Gamecocks maybe just now feeling the pressure as on second and two with three minutes to go. They're starting to throw it up and coverage is okay. They're going deep on us and we had three guys there, but nobody could come down with the interception. That brings up the third and two, and honestly, I'm kind of expecting a run. They do hand it off. Can we get there? We do. We're able to stuff them. I think that might have been Durham Finch getting in there and breaking it up. But we are not out of hot water yet. Fourth and one now for the Gamecocks to keep the dream of this game alive. And they're going to hand it off out towards the edge. Kale Mackey can't get there. Will Phillips does, but it's just not in time. Patrick Griffin barely able to get across the line again. All of this, however, just with the time slowly ticking away as they've had to really fight. And the quarterback throws that one away. Our coverage has been solid so far this game. Now that we're not really allowing the quarterback to scramble, they just don't have a lot that they can do. Quarterback trying to scramble. That time he runs into Durham Finch and he gets sacked for a loss of four. All right, third and a mile for these guys. Can we slow them down? We don't necessarily need the stop, but anything would do and... Durham Finch just feasting right now. Another sack. It's fourth and 25. South Carolina wants nothing to do with our defense. They've elected just to take the loss and punt this one away with less than two minutes on the clock. They have officially waved the white flag, but I don't know if our team has. Marquise Jackson on the punt return. He's got the corner. Makes another man miss. He's off to the races. I don't know if he has the speed, but he does, and he takes it. 66 yards into the house. A beautiful block at the end of the run. Freed up the space. And Marquise Jackson proving to be a formidable Heisman contender with that one. Ooh, Maryland upsets number 10, Ohio State. So the day continues to get better. And after South Carolina said, we don't want to face your defense anymore. Marquise said, too bad. Uh, we're kicking this one off, and they've got a minute and 23 where they've got to suffer against the wrath of what our defense has been giving them. I wouldn't be surprised if they come out and just run the football. And that's on first down. That's exactly what happens out towards the edge. We're there with Will Phillips, and we drop him just past the line of scrimmage. Seems like it's no more passing for this Gamecocks team as... They're just maybe running the clock out. A minute to go. They do actually step back looking to throw. And they go with the short one to the tight end over the middle. And he actually gets the first down. And they take a timeout. South Carolina, no, you were supposed to be the good guys here. I was expecting maybe finally that we got a team that just accepted their loss. But these guys don't want to say die either. Don Riley with the big tackle. And they take their second timeout. 
Really don't understand some of the play calling, but I can't complain too much. Second and eight. They look to throw once again over the middle. They had a guy open, but we covered it, and Spencer Stanley drops another interception. Oh, come on, defense. Our guys cannot hold on to save their lives at the moment, so it's another third down for South Carolina. They're looking to throw. Somebody's got to be open. Quarterback scrambling, and it's another sack. Oh, man, they're going to have to punt the ball away again. I could take the timeout and maybe try to score some more points, but we'll just allow them to punt the ball to us without uh, doing anything. And who knows, maybe, just maybe, Marquise can get another beautiful return. If he can get to the corner, he had some blocks. He's able to burn a couple of guys. Maybe just the kicker to beat. Oh my gosh, Marquise Jackson does it again. Maybe with the clock expiring, I would like to not have to run another play, but he's run out of space, and Marquise Jackson, after going 66 yards on the last punt return, takes this one 75. Absolutely amazing. We got some good blocks, but I got to say that time, we just made some really nice moves to avoid the contact. So here with three seconds to go. Oh, man, I expected them to... Uh, pass the ball or to run the ball but they end up passing it and they get two yards down the game Andy Hall ends okay 14 to 19 but only 88 yards and we just smothered him and the rest of the Gamecocks offense as we come out as the top chicken in the game oh my gosh the Chanticleers proving to be better than the Gamecocks and we beat a top 25 team very very handily what a great game for us, man. We held them to 39 rushing yards and 88 passing yards. The defense absolutely obliterated as we just gave up the, the one touchdown. But look at that fourth quarter, 21 points when the game was already wrapped up. Just absolutely shut them down. 132 on the ground, 196 through the air. Marquise is our offensive player of the game, which makes sense. Only three receptions, but those two punt return touchdowns were absolutely beautiful. And Will Phillips... Had a sack. He had a forced fumble. Uh, you know, I'm maybe you look at Durham Finch. There's a lot of guys that did very well on defense in this game. So as the number one team in the country, we get the win over the number 12 South Carolina Gamecocks. Again, we end up as the uh, the top cock as we get advanced towards our next week against Tennessee. I'm fairly certain that the Volunteers won last week or this week, so they were number five. They will either stay number five or increase. Eric Jones, the kicker, commits. So does Patrick Carroll, so they must have had some good visits. Uh, some guys ready to visit. Kevin Peterson locks us out. Uh, nothing too special going on there so far we will stay number one in the country and tennessee moves up to number four uh at eight and one the volunteers are having a great season so far just a quick little preview we are not favored to win this game even though we are the higher overall team we have the better record and statistically we seem to be having a better season so kind of interesting there we do have to go on the road and see what happens uh there at rocky top but I still feel pretty confident in our gameplay. Uh, what does our PCS poll look like this week? We know there had to have been some upsets. Ohio State lost. Oregon at number five lost to Stanford by three. That's a pretty classic game between those two teams. Uh, Texas at number 10 lost. Uh, South Carolina at number eight. They went number eight in the PCS. Wow, I didn't realize that. Uh, what else do we have? Ohio State losing to Maryland. So a decent uh, week in terms of big teams losing every team that's near us in the rankings that loses is great and we have some other big ones uh tennessee uh will play us west virginia will play oklahoma nebraska and wisconsin play uh that's seven and six usc stanford oregon cal are ranked florida south carolina minnesota illinois so a lot of chances for ranked teams to lose, and you never know with upsets, uh, crazy things could happen. How about our Heisman watch? Marquise moves up a spot right on back up into the top five after an okay game. Uh, we dropped down the South Carolina running back. 11 carries for 35 yards is not a very big Heisman performance. Marquise absolutely showed him up there, but now we have to worry about Kevin Jones, the Wisconsin running back who... 
Had a pretty solid game, 122 rushing and 40 receiving yards. That's not too bad. How about this? One final thing to look at before we end the episode is the awards semifinalist lists are out. We'll just quickly go through and see if we have guys. Right on Randell for the Maxwell. Right on Randell for the Walter Camp. We've got Don Ridley, Will Phillips, Kale Mackey, David Wilson. Anybody else? No, those guys all for the Bednarik, the Nagurski. The same group, essentially. The O'Brien, right on Randell. Uh, Marquise Jackson for the Belitnikov. So far, nobody up for the Mackey. The Outland, we do have Robert Gray, our center there. He's also there for the Remington alongside Donald Dunn. Uh, the Lombardi, we've got Wilson and Finch. The Butkus, we've got Riley Phillips and Mackey. Nobody for the Thorpe? No, okay. Logan Smith does manage to sneak his way on there. Uh, for the Grozo, we have nobody. For the Guy, we have nobody. And for the Jets or the uh, the kick return award, it's no surprise that Marquise Jackson is up at the top. 1,400 kick return yards and five kick return touchdowns and 520 punt return yards with three punt return touchdowns is just miles and miles ahead of anybody else. I mean, if we're talking just touchdowns, he has eight. Second place has one. Third place has none. Fourth place has one. Like, you go a long ways down this list to get to eight total touchdowns in special themes. Actually, I think he has more than the rest of the semifinalists combined. So, uh, he could start to run backwards and give up safeties on every single return, and he would probably still win the award at this point. For him, though, I'm sure that the Heisman might be a little bit more important. Uh, unfortunately for him, he's going to have to wait, and so are you guys, because that is the end of this episode. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free again to hit the like button. Uh, subscribe as well if you haven't done that already. Both of those things do tr truly help the channel grow. Uh, I'm not, not lying when I say that. Uh, it's very noticeable. Uh, and again, thank you guys for your support on these videos. This has been a fun season so far. and That was a very fun game to play. If you haven't already, head to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, our community Discord, and the college football revamped mod if you're trying to get that for yourself. But all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys. Wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.